And so he looks at Belshazzar and says, you're his successor. And you knew this story. You knew that he was brought low so that he could learn humility, but you did not humble yourself. And you proudly defy God and you even went and grabbed the cups from the temple of the Lord and you're using them. You're using them to praise your gods that can't even see or hear or talk or do anything. You have not honored God. So God sent the hand to write this message down because in your notes, God will bring low those who defy him. Seems like in our country, in our world, it has become a popular thing to defy God, to defy God with our views, with our morals, with our politics. We defy God. God will bring low those who defy him. And, and you know the crazy thing? Daniel hasn't even got to the interpretation yet. Like, 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 like at this point, he's just kind of on a rant. He's like, yeah, I'll tell you the writing, but let, let me just air a few things first. You know what? You are proud. You are nothing like Nebuchadnezzar. I'm just gonna vent for a minute and then we'll get to the writing on the wall. So here we go in Daniel 5, 25. This is the message that was written. Mene, Mene, Tekel, and Parson. This is what these words meant. See, these were Aramaic words. The Babylonians didn't understand the Aramaic uh, uh, you know, language, and so Daniel came and he could see them. Each word had a meaning, but then there was a sentence that God gave him for each of these words. Mene, which is actually repeated, and it's repeated for emphasis, it means numbered. And Daniel says, this is what that means. God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel means weighed. You've been weighed on the balances and you have not measured up. Parison, which means divided. Your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was dressed in purple robes and a gold chain was hung around his neck and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler of the kingdom. See, Belshazzar was proud. He was violent. He did what he wanted to do. He was powerful, but he did not measure up to God's standards. See, God says, I'm weighing you, Belshazzar. I'm weighing you. You know, he's like, I'm gonna put you on my scale and see where you stand. You think you're so powerful? You think you have so much money and popularity and fame and all this? I am gonna weigh you, and I weighed you and found that you are severely lacking that you severely do not measure up. You know what it's like? It's like, like when you're a kid and you go to an amusement park. Remember that when you're a kid? You go to an amusement park and they got all the great roller coasters, the ones that go upside down, the ones that go really fast, all the great roller coasters. And you go up like, I wanna go on that roller coaster, the one that spins upside down 18 times and makes you throw up at the end. I'm gonna go on that roller coaster. And you go up and then there's the guy, the guy with the stick, right? The stick, and the stick's like a reverse L shape. He says, okay, we gotta see if you're tall enough to ride. And you go up to that stick, and, and you're on your tiptoes, and you're kind of puffing up your hair a little bit, trying with all that you are to reach the top of the stick. But then the attendant says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you just don't measure up, kid. Just not tall enough. You, 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 there's something that, that's lacking here, and that lack is height, and you're not allowed to go on the ride. God is saying, hey, Belshazzar, I have weighed you, and you are wanting. You do not measure up. Through the debauchery of his life, through the pride that he uh, just lived in, through this total disregard for the most high God, through the evil in his heart, God saw that he was lacking. How about in your life? How about in your life? If God weighed you right now on his celestial scale, would you be found wanting? Would you measure up? If God weighed your family, would it be found wanting? If God weighed our country, hmm, would it be found wanting? Or would he say, you know what? You just don't measure up. You don't measure up to my standards. See, this is all about being men and women of honor, being men and women who love and serve God, who have integrity. In your notes, God works through people with integrity. 
people who are the same behind closed doors as they are in front of people, people who are not living the life of a hypocrite, people who are not fake, people who are not consumed by pride and ego and arrogance. See, God works through people like Daniel, people who have integrity, who have nerves of steel. It says in Proverbs 21, verse two, a person may think they're right in their own eyes. A person may think their own ways are right, sorry. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. God is the one who weighs your heart, who weighs your motives. Have you ever done the right thing with the wrong motive? Maybe you've helped somebody, maybe you've done something for someone, but you really only did it because you wanted to look good for someone else. You really only did it because you wanted to to appear a certain way. See, God weighs the heart, God weighs the motives, and God weighed Belshazzar's heart and found it severely lacking. So how is your heart? Are you more concerned with the world? Are you more concerned with power and money and pride and politics and fame and education, or are you walking humbly before the Lord? God wants us to walk in humility because in your notes, humility attracts God's honor. It attracts God's honor when we walk humbly before the Lord. It says in Daniel chapter five, verse 30, it says that very night, Belshazzar, the Babylonian king, was killed. And Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. This is a pivotal moment. This is a pivotal moment in the Babylonian Empire because it was conquered by Darius the Mede and Cyrus the Persian. Now Cyrus was the overarching ruler and Darius was the ruler of the Medes and they kind of co-reigned together Now let's reflect back to the first dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, the dream of a statue of a man, and the head was made of gold, and the chest and arms were made out of silver. And this was symbolic of a new kingdom that would come, a kingdom with two sides, the Medo-Persian kingdom, the kingdom ruled by Darius the Mede and Cyrus the Persian. And see, Belshazzar did not realize that while he was partying, his city was being invaded. He thought he had it all figured out. He was so proud. His kingdom was impenetrable, but he forgot one thing. See, the Medes and the Persians, as they laid in siege around the city, they realized that the Euphrates River was going through the center of the city. So you know what they did? They dammed up the Euphrates River and they diverted it to a marshland and it allowed their soldiers to go under the walls and come in and conquer Babylon without even a battle. Because of pride. Pride. They'll never get us. I'm bigger than God. I'm better than God. He didn't realize that while he was partying, God was bringing a sentence to him. And that began the Medo-Persian rule. This was a rule that had been prophesied by Jeremiah and had been prophesied by Isaiah. In fact, Isaiah, hundreds of years before this happened, not only predicted that it would happen, but predicted the name of the conquering king being Cyrus. And he was a key person. You know why he was a key person? Because he was the one who ultimately liberated the children of God, the Jewish people, to go back to their homeland. And he authorized the rebuilding of the temple. And all throughout this, in the early years of Daniel, there was another prophet, and his name was Jeremiah. And he said, the famous quote, he says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans that are good, plans to give you future, plans to give you hope. And here, that plan was beginning to come to pass because God weighed a king and found him wanting, but he was using that as a way to deliver his people back. Now, when God weighs you and me, do we fall short? If the truth be made known, we have all sinned and we all fall short of God's standard. None of us measure up. None of us are big enough to go on the ride. None of us have enough weight on our own, but we need the saving grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
See, Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar, they were looking forward to the promise of a Messiah. We have the opportunity to look back and see the King who came, the King who died on a cross, the resurrected King, the one whom all other kings will one day bow, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the name above all names and all of us. We need to come humbly before him. We need to have nerves of steel, not bowing to the pressures of this world, but bowing to the one and only true King, Jesus Christ our Lord.